नमस्कार वेलकम टू प्रकाश ऑन बेसिक्स आई एम प्रकाश जोग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑफ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशंस दैट वी यूज एट आर होम्स नाउ डेज फॉर अ वेराइटी ऑफ पर्पजेस बेस्ड ऑन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विच इज ऑब्वियसली द टेलीविजन इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ सप्लाइंग इंफॉर्मेशन टू अस um it's it's a part of work requirement for many of the people because whenever we talk of uh, the variety of component uh, computer uh, displays panels uh, medical equipments that are used everywhere there are monitors and they all work on practically the same principles that started off with the television um it's a very important aspect for another reason it tells us uh, how quite a bit of technology developed in the process of understanding and utilizing electricity to convert uh, pictures that moved into information that resulted into continuous motion all computerized imaging that is done nowadays uh, is the next step in tv usage that we have already been seeing in the last few years um it obviously uses electricity um, and it converts uh, it into light and sound uh, through use of magnetic energy so all the energies that we talked of are related its history working is a, in a great way to understand how human technology has gradually developed in last uh, 100 years uh, for this we must first uh, understand some of the aspects associated with vision i'm going to go into details of all this much later when i talk of light uh, but understand that um, our retina uh, on which the image is finally formed within our eye um, consists of rods and cones uh, the rods are uh, the ones that detect black and white intensity um, and there are about 120 million of them uh, whereas the cones that detect color are around uh, four and a half to six million in number, depending upon uh, the size and so forth. Now, what happens is the image is produced there because of some chemical reactions, and the image does not disappear immediately. And the image is retained for some time. If a new image is produced on the same area with a very slight variation. and uh, the two images tend to get superimposed and if this happens roughly around 16 times per second um 16 pictures per second uh, it appears as if the movement is continuous in nature um uh, if the motion is produced because of 24 pictures per second uh, this is typically referred to as frames per second um then the motion appears to be very continuous and smooth this tendency to retain the image for some time is known as persistence of vision uh it's like uh, you take you take a uh, burning uh, stick and turn it around and you see a circle the circle is because of this persistence of vision uh, and this is the principle that was used in uh, making films also uh early films used to produce frames which were less than occasionally 16 and because of this if you see very old uh, films on uh, uh, dandi march and gandhi ji walking along the road you find that all his motions are jerky the reason is because the frames uh, are not up to the mark they are not uh, that many per second uh, this is uh, this has modified with time not only in films but as we are going to see now in uh, tvs also television so what does a tv do it converts a two dimensional image like the one that you're seeing of me in front of you into a one dimensional line this then becomes a signal 
this signal like the way we talked of in terms of radios is superimposed on top of a carrier wave and um, transmitted it is then received the one dimensional signal is taken off converted back into two dimensional uh, image and that's the one that you see on in front of you on the tv let's make this a little more simple uh, 2d to 1d what is all this um, let's say um, i'm wearing a sweater okay and it has a design let's say a uh, 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 elephant on top of it i'm sitting in this room and i want to transfer this design to the next room what will i do uh, i mean i cannot move nobody can move only the elephant has to transfer from here to there so what you have to do is unwind the sweater as you do that it becomes a single thread so this 2d issue becomes a one dimensional information unit it is taken to the other room and you again knit it up once more and once you knit it up you get the picture again and so you have transferred this information from one point to the other converting a two dimensional information into one dimension and reproducing it as two dimensions again but that's only one picture that is transferred i need if i i need to see movement i need to do that 24 times at least per second the whole sweater has to be knit again 24 times per second imagine all this you can't do it mechanically so it has to involve electricity and electronics i can also do it in terms of a let's say a photograph for example i have a photograph i cut it down into very small thin number of strips connect the strips to one another take it to the other side cut the strips again paste them once more and get the picture back again there is only one hitch in the whole process whatever is the pattern in which i have taken out these strips the same size has to be used once more there if not the picture would never get formed so there are some restrictions which are quite obvious uh, also uh, i can't change the size of any of them otherwise the pattern will get distorted so uh, cutting the picture down to the right size every time in every line is equally important and uh, 30 times a second all this is a very huge amount of information so the signal that is produced is also very large and the carrier wave something that i talked of in the uh, radio issue is also pretty large and so you can't use normal frequencies that are used for radios so you need much higher ones which are referred to as gigahertz now one more issue if you uh, if you look at the pictures that are there in uh, newspapers or even if you look at the pictures very carefully on your tv screen the black and white pictures uh, use a lens or something to look at them and you will find that they are nothing made of nothing but dots so a newspaper if you look very carefully is made up of only dots so the picture finally is made in terms of dots that are presented because we are far away the dots merge into each other forming a continuous line or a shape that we are interested in um remember uh, sometimes in olympics etc uh, a number of people on the uh, in the stadium hold placards or boards red green and so forth and from far away you could see a picture because of those square blocks if you go further the picture becomes more continuous in nature so a tv does the same thing only the size of those dots is extremely small as far as tvs are concerned uh, there is a special name for these dots and they are known as pixels picture elements that is the word that comes from pixels now how did all this start off i told you that it's a very good important and very intelligent technology uh, it started off with um, 
something uh, it, the most important part in a normal old type of TV that you see is what is known as CRT cathode ray tube. The person who is very popular for it is J. J. Thompson, but actually the cathode ray tube was invented by a German scientist called Braun in 1891. Uh, and what it has is, it has a, it is like a picture tube that we see and in front inwards is a coating of a material known as phosphor. Whenever a high energy electron beam falls on it, it begins to glow. This electron beam is produced, remember that picture tube that you have seen inside a TV or so many photographs that you see, it is a narrow tube opens out into a broad band and that is exactly the shape that you see. So, here inside is an electron gun that produces a beam of electrons. They are accelerated from this point up to the phosphor screen by using a very high voltage and as this beam goes through it is deflected to different sides by using magnetic fields and this is exactly how the beam begins to travel. And what does it do? The beam, let us say it comes from here, it is deflected, it goes to the top corner, then goes horizontally all the way up to here. It is switched off, brought back here again and it goes once more all the way along, goes up to this point, stops rather is switched off, brought back here and this process continues in a number of lines, a very large number of lines. 525 or more number of lines are used and this process of converting information in the form of lines is the one that is known as scanning. So, this is what exactly happens and what do you do then? You switch on or switch off the beam at different instances because of another part of the electrical circuit. So, what happens is the beam either falls on that phosphor surface makes it glow or not glow making it dark or bright and the amount that it glows depends upon the extent of um, intensity of the beam and so forth and so what happens is you get different shades of dark and bright that are produced like the dotted images in a newspaper. And this is how the image finally gets formed. This is because of the scanning process. And that is how a TV uh, uses the beam of electron to form a picture. The deflection of course is carried out by using uh, a set of uh, discs made out of special materials of magnetic type. It is known as a magnetic yoke and it is connected to electrical coils in which current is varied to cause the necessary shift and these are known as steering coils of the electron beam. The beam is on off where it is bright or dark and it is finally the dots that you see that produce the picture. That is fine, that is how, uh, how a TV is going to show you the picture. How do you produce it in the first place? And this started off with, uh, with a person called Nipkov, uh, this is around 1884. What he did was, uh, he used a camera to take photographs and in front of the camera was a disc and a disc had a number of holes that were in a circular pattern like this. One complete turn of the disc had a set of holes at different points and the camera is to take pictures only through those holes and it was a rapidly moving camera. So, what you had is information of the whole picture in the form of different points. See what has happened? The 2D two dimensional information has been reduced to one dimensional line and this information um, was collected and transmitted and this mechanical form of the disk many of them were developed. Uh, uh, the best ones used to rotate at close to uh, 1200 rotations per minute. So, you can imagine how fast they were turning, 
obviously these had mechanical problems uh, it had to be as there had to be a synchronization between the one that was here and at other uh, units also uh, then they tried out uh, drums which were coated with mirrors at different angles but all this was pretty difficult and so people had to wait till electronics and other electrical technologies developed and very fast working devices using semiconductors and other techniques came into picture 26th june uh, no 26th january 1926 a date uh, uh, a date on which uh, john byard an electrical engineer uh, uh, first demonstrated um, a tv in its black and white form and uh, august 1944 the same person went ahead and uh, demonstrated a color tv whether it was 15th of august i don't know but uh, the dates as far as indians are concerned seem to be pretty uh, touching and then um, he produced the images but see the basic idea was to transmit only this much amount of part and so he was interested in only covering this area and so much of part and the image of a person speaking was to be transmitted at a given point and so this ratio of the sizes is something that is very typical and it is referred to as the aspect ratio the aspect ratio of this first tv was 7 is to 3 7 vertical and 3 horizontal so that the just just this particular part could fit in uh, head and shoulders uh typically um but things were not really very convenient uh, things uh, the the instrument was designed it started working but large scale production and utilization was pretty difficult till electronics developed enough uh, to produce the images properly synchronize them and send them around it is uh, bbc that started off with uh, utilizing this uh, but there was one more issue information uh, initially is to always be in terms of what is known as analog proportional type till the information was converted to digital that is 0101 form a very large frequency utilization was not possible this happened when semiconductors came along and very high frequency which is typically a word that is used as vhf and uhf ultra high frequency these are just words uh, i am giving you the expansion but these are the words that are often linked to uh, tv transmission and these are the ones that are used these frequencies were used uh, to transmit data for the tv so it is not just overnight that tvs came into picture a lot of development had to go across and then Uh, naturally uh, we we'll go back to the problem i talked of uh, the number of dots the scissors the cutting and repasting it so where to cut how much to cut and how much when is the next line going to start it has to be identical in the beginning and at the end so there were some standards that were set um one was the ntsc national tv standard committee this was an american standard that was used and uh, the americans you had their own pattern i'm coming to that why and uh, the second one was phase alternating line this was p a l or pal so ntsc and pal became the two techniques by which these lines were formed and the british and the europeans and the asians they all used uh, Uh, this pal system there was an intermediate scam type uh, which is used by china and then it got transferred to pakistan and so these one or two countries still use a scam um, the rest of them invariably tend to use pal uh, we in india tend to use the pal system uh, of sizing up and processing the whole thing um, this 
lines that are produced have to produce the dots and produce a large number of images as I told you if persistence of vision that is motion is to be observed. And so um, this NTSC pattern used 525 lines per second that were drawn and um, these were drawn 30 times per second alternately that means the frequency used in USA etc is 60 hertz so they used uh, 30 frames so every alternate line was drawn and then the next time the other one so odd even odd even combination was used and this is known as inter interlaced pattern by which picture is formed and what happened in PAL in PAL they used 625 lines but they formed 25 pictures in every alternate so total of 50 um, so naturally if you had an NTSC type of a uh, program you just could not bring it and put it in on the PAL system because it never would match and you would get all hazy and odd pictures and uh, aspects. So, there had to be a method to transfer one to the other. All this technology naturally developed a little later. Um, then came another us issue. Many of the information units used to be recorded still by movie cameras and films and other things. And there, there was a lot of development going on. Originally, uh, the ratio of the aspect ratio that I was talking of was 4 is to 3. And then, uh, cinema scope and wide scope and all other forms, Panavision and all started coming off on TV, on, on films. So, naturally, uh, if those had to be shown on TV, there was another issue that we sometimes see on TV itself you have the picture in the middle and a blank space above and below. So, there had to be something if, if you magnify it some part of the head is missing or some part of the lower part is missing and so forth. So, there had to be compression and modifications done. All these started coming in only when the electronics started getting better and better with time. And later on it was realized that the most convenient form when TVs were made in the beginning you will remember that they were originally they were they tended to be circular then they came into that 4 by 3 format and nowadays all smart TVs and everything is in the ratio is in the aspect ratio of 16 is to 9. You are seeing this film being this recording also in the ratio of 16 is to 9. So, so for this the PAL system is modified and it is converted into what is known as the PAL plus time and this PAL plus gives you the ratio of 16 is to 9. There is another hitch in between again. I am recording this on, 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 on a laptop and there the aspect ratio is 16 is to 10. Then what happens? The, the, then what actually happens is whenever most of us use computers in other areas other than the picture there is some additional information to be stored the, the, there is a panel below that tells us uh, what you are doing or uh, what is to be switched on or what is to be switched off and so forth. So, for that an additional patch below is left and that is how the pictures nowadays come about. So, we now have the production and the transmission at home. But let me remind you of something else like, like everywhere the signal has to be collected and for this you cannot use an ordinary wire to get the signal into your residence. So, you need a special type of an antenna and all those uh, old timers will remember that there used to be a zigzag 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 set of metal wires and a big antenna that used to be on the roof lines like this and so forth. And uh, Any time the angle changed, uh, you you wouldn't see the picture clearly. So those were one type of dipole type of antennas. Then uh, better TVs came up with uh, what are known as rabbit ears or dipole uh, antennas. So on the TV set itself, there used to be two wires like this, 
in india this is not really very common because by the time the other methods came into and so there is to be what are known as the dipole type of uh, tv antennas and then uh, all the information technology changed a uh, lot of improvement was made and coaxial cables came about optical cables came about and all the information associated with tv of high frequency was transmitted through wires to your residence but till that time there was one more issue the frequencies that are used for tv signals are in the range of 2 to 12 gigahertz giga is 10 raised to 9 and uh, it has two parts one is the video component and one is the audio component the video component is recorded in terms of what is known as amplitude modulation something i told you when i talked of radios and the sound part is recorded in terms of fm that is frequency modulation and the whole patch small and big together this whole lump forms one information unit for one tv channel so these were channels within a or a band that was formed and uh, those who have seen early tvs in india would realize that would remember that they had to actually tune these channels and if the if the if the channel was not tuned properly what would happen is you would see the picture of one and the gradual sound of the other one so you had to readjust it till the correct band was amplified by your tv and the picture could be seen and the signals used to come from a repeating tower uh, which was uh, within a range of about 30 kilometers it's not like radio where the signals could go to the ionosphere bang up and down and reach any place anywhere around the world so you had to send a signal to a synchronous satellite how that works i'm going to come to sometime later on and the signal beams down to your uh, city and there is a dish antenna which collects the information and it is then fed to the cables and then it finally reaches our homes today so this process is totally different from the way in which radios work you must also remember one more aspect uh, the digital information can be transmitted through optical cables far better without losses than air signals and so nowadays in most cases everybody has a cable that comes home they don't have an antenna on top and all information is transmitted through the same optical cable or a regular coaxial cable to your residence and the corresponding selection is done accordingly and then what about the color tv because black and white was fine but uh, i mentioned that the same person bad has, was the one who started off with color tv also and i talked of rods and cones and there Uh, what happens is uh, you have uh, some primary colors and some color combinations by which you can actually see so uh, tvs typically use rbg g combination or red green and blue components and they are mixed in proper proportions to produce whichever shade you want to so what is done is monochrome mono is one color so the tv broadcast is made in terms of three different colors red green and blue and they are all superimposed matched and superimposed that's a pretty complex uh, situation let's not go into details of that and they are blended and transmitted and um, on the tv i mentioned the word pixel that is the small unit that consists of three parts red blue and green and the corresponding percentage of intensity of that particular color is transmitted to this particular point and when this happens the new shade that you are interested in gets produced and this is how the picture is formed in terms of colors 
because finally the combined effect of the mixture of these three is the one that produces the sensation of that particular color within our eye. This has been possible only because of digital technology where the frequencies, the number of scannings and the number of ways in which it could be repeated is extremely large. The whole process is pretty complicated but I have given you the gist of how these colors are produced and how we start seeing all this. As far as the PAL system that we tend to use in India consists, we have a uh, 5 megahertz part patch and 5.5 megahertz uh, 0.5 part for the sound and this combination is the one that is used for a particular channel uh, in which transmission is carried out. This one more small area that I must mention. And this deals with uh, the type of TVs that we see and they always talk of resolution. This is more associated with pictures and how these dots produce. This pixel is the smallest unit of digital display that, that is going to produce a particular color. Each pixel uh, has a sub pixel of uh, red, green and blue and the combination as I told you is the one that produces the the, the final picture. Uh, so, what you talk of in, is in terms of these pixels that decides how the TV is resolved. This is like uh, people for chemistry would understand. It is like uh, you talk of atoms making up things, but actually every atom is made out of electrons, protons and neutrons. So, that is that uh, and how many electrons, how many protons, how many neutrons finally decides on the type of the atom or the type of the color the same thing happens to red blue and green and that is how you start getting the different colors but it is finally each pixel that decides on the color and then these are talked of in terms of how many pixels are there in this line horizontally and how many vertical lines are used and the multiplication of the two will give you um, the total number of dots that are available. So, when we talk of a uh, uh, high definition TV, it has uh, 19, 20 horizontal pixels and there are 1080 uh, vertical lines. So, you, you, will, um, you will find that the older ones usually had uh, 1280 horizontal and 720 vertical. So, um, you will find that TVs also are marked as 1080p or 720p or our cameras and other things are also marked in the same way and when you multiply the two of them you finally land up with somewhere close to 2 million and when you say it is 2 million you call it as 2 megapixels and now you have the new TVs which are 4K. So, in 4K it is uh, 3840 dots like this and 2160 dots like this and if you multiply this close to 4 times the original and so correspondingly the amount of megapixels increases. Now of course, you have uh, ultra high definition TVs with 8, uh, 8 uh, K and so forth. One thing that really changed in the whole process was the cathode ray tube was totally replaced when semiconductors came in and diodes came in what diodes are and what semiconductors are I am going to talk of some time later to get a brief idea of what they are. But then that all those cumbersome TVs like a big box sometimes referred to as the idiot box uh, was eliminated and you had flat panel TVs. Then came the next logical step where the pixels and the dots were in terms of liquid crystal display that is LCD or what were known as the other type which was the plasma TVs. Then came the OLEDs, the organic LEDs. The advantage of these OLEDs is that uh, for, for a LED, LED panel you have to see right in front or at small angle from here and here. But OLEDs you could see from extreme angles and still the picture would be equally clear that is one advantage and the second in that uh, they are extremely lightweight 
and uh, the blacks are extremely dark and black so so all the screens many a times are originally just black and uh, these dots are then uh, modified into corresponding colors so there are a lot of e uh, changes that came about with every development of uh, electronics electricity and other areas in which development took place so where are we heading to the next step obviously is going to be 3d tvs I take some time. I actually plan to finish. I thought I'll talk on TVs for about five, ten minutes and finish the whole thing. But there's so much of information. I know some of this is going to be a little difficult. But it's fun to know something more complex. You might have to listen to this again to catch on to many of the ideas. But the gist is what I have given you. Let's not go into very complicated areas. If you have understood what TVs are, how they work, what are the basic principles, I am happy. And um, please pass on this information to your friends. So like and subscribe to this channel. And that's not the end of electricity. There are so many more things to talk of in electricity. I'll come to those next time, next fortnight, alternately as usual. Till we meet again. Namaskar.